As we get started this morning, I wonder if you're anything like me. And when you were younger, as a child, you didn't always understand everything that your parents told you. Sometimes you thought, it, it just doesn't make sense what they're telling me. It's kind of like a little boy that I had heard about. Him and his father had went camping. They were deep in the woods. And his father asked the little boy to take a letter into town. Now the little boy had never walked to town from the campsite before by himself. But yet he wanted to do what his father had asked him. So he said, Father, I will do what you say, but I don't know where town is. <laughs> and his father said, do you see that trail over there? And the little boy said, yes. And he said, do you see that tree down the trail? And the little boy said, yes, Father, I can see that tree. He said, you walk to that tree and you will notice that the trail continues to another tree and the trail continues to another tree and so on and so on until you get to town and to the house that I want you to deliver the letter to. We can see from this story that the little boy did not have to know every inch of the trail to get to the house to deliver this letter. In a similar way, we do not have to know everything about what God has in mind for us, yet we need to be obedient, staying on the trail, if you will, that we might fulfill taking the message of the gospel to all the world. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you this morning, I pray, Father, that as we study your text in Acts chapter 8 today, that, Lord, we will see obedience to you and we will see a desire to reach the world with the gospel. And I pray, Lord, that as we hear your truth, your word, that we will be convicted and encouraged to stay on the path and to reach the world with the gospel. It's in your name, Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. So as I said, we'll be in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. I'll start to read. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet. And he asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation... Justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, 
they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Astos. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. <clears throat> so this is the second time in the book of Acts that we see Philip evangelizing people outside of Jewish cities. Don't forget that the reason that Philip is evangelizing these cities away from the Jewish cities is because of the persecution against the church. It's actually in Acts, it was called a great persecution against the church. And so Philip and many others left after Stephen had been stoned. So remember last week when Chris talked about how Philip was proclaiming Christ to the Samaritans. And many listened and believed, so many that Peter and John came from Jerusalem to Samaria to see what was going on. And after they had stayed for a little bit, uh, there was a conversation with Simon the magician. Peter and John go back. But Philip is still in Samaria with what appears to be a thriving ministry. We cannot forget that Philip was one of the seven. He was one of the seven along with Stephen. And I think this is important for us because it shows us that God doesn't just use apostles or pastors or elders, but he uses all of us, every one of us, everyday spirit-filled Christians is who he uses to reach the world with the gospel, actually to be witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Also in this passage, we meet an Ethiopian eunuch. The, Ethiop the Ethiopia of the first century was south, just barely south of Egypt. It was where northern Sudan is today, and it was ethnically a black kingdom. Also, the first century Ethiopia was known to the Romans as the end of the earth because it was the last country to the south that had been civilized. Therefore, this passage is an advance fulfillment of the gospel going to the ends of the earth in the first century. This Ethiopian eunuch was probably a God-fearer which means that he believed in Yahweh, though he had not become Jewish and could not because he was a eunuch. It is possible that he had embraced Judaism sometime in the past while in Jerusalem on business because he was a high governmental official. And, and we actually have some records of trade between Jerusalem and Ethiopia. So it's very possible that that's how he had heard of Judaism, and how he becomes a God-fearer. And it would explain why this Ethiopian is in Jerusalem worshiping at this particular time. And while he's there, we don't know if he purchases, purchases the scroll there or he just has it with him, but on his way home, he is reading from Isaiah as he travels home. So as we consider this passage today, we will focus on three aspects of how obedience to God advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. The first aspect will be obedience in actions advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. The second will be Obedience in knowing God's Word advances the fulfillment 
of reaching the world with the gospel. And the third will be obedience in discipleship advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. So now we go to our first aspect. And again, it is obedience in actions advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. In this section, Luke writes, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to it. We must remember that Philip has this growing ministry happening in Samaria. He is seeing people that once considered the lowest of the low being saved, becoming part of the church. And then, out of nowhere, an angel of the Lord comes and says to Philip, Rise and go to the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now this road was a desert place, and the Gaza of the first century was abandoned. So I I just have to ask, what is going through Philip's mind right now? Lord, do you... Do you see what's going on here in Samaria? I've got some good things happening. A lot of people are being saved. They're hearing your word. They are turning to you. Do you really want me to go to the desert, to an abandoned city? But he doesn't ask. He goes. He doesn't hesitate. Scripture tells us that he rose and went. And when he got there... Scripture tells us that he found an Ethiopian eunuch, the one that I spoke of earlier, reading the text. But as we think about this, as he gets there, he actually just gets to a road. And then the Holy Spirit tells him, go to that chariot. He, He doesn't realize that there is a eunuch in there reading Isaiah. He, He doesn't know what's going on. But he doesn't hesitate, even in this. And not only that, but think about this. If the Ethiopian had started reading Isaiah at the beginning of the scroll in Jerusalem, he's probably went a pretty good distance, which means that Philip would have had to have traveled a long distance as well to meet up with him on this road. And so Philip was probably tired uh, when he got there. Yet, when the Holy Spirit tells him, go over and join that chariot, Philip takes off running for it. Thus, throughout these verses, we can see that God in his sovereignty was going to have Philip meet with this Ethiopian for a specific reason. Though Philip did not know the plan, he trusted in God and was obedient in his actions because he wanted to see the fulfillment of the gospel going to the whole world. It's kind of like a legend that I had heard one time of a king. This king needed a faithful servant. And so he hires two men, Uh, he gives them fixed wages, and he tells them to fill a basket with water from a neighboring well, saying that he would come and check on them later. So the two servants go, and after they get there, one of them, after filling his bucket a couple of times and dumping it in the basket, says... 
What is the good of doing this useless work? As soon as I put the water in the top, it runs out the bottom of the basket. The other answered, but we have our wages. The use is the master's business, not ours. I'm not going to do this fool's work anymore, says the one, as he throws down his bucket and leaves. The other man continued until he had exhausted the well. Looking down into the well, he saw something shining. A diamond ring. Now I see the use of pouring water into a basket, he cried. If the bucket had brought up the ring before the well was emptied, it would have been found in the basket. Our work is not useless. So in a similar way, Christians should be obedient to act on those things that God has commanded. Those things that He's commanded in His Word. Even though at times it may be hard. It may not make sense as to what society is telling us, what the world around us tells us. We may think, Lord, it's hard to follow your word sometimes. These commands to do different things, to love my neighbor, to care for others, to live in the way that you command me to live in a world that is totally opposite of that. And it makes it harder. But we must trust in our master and be obedient. As Jesus tells Peter and Andrew in Matthew 4.19, he says, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. We should recognize that in this, that obedience to Jesus is through a relationship with him. It's not following a list of rules. Though this relationship with Jesus meant that Peter and Andrew had to give up their career as fishermen. And they had to trust that being obedient to Jesus was what was ultimately the best for them. This does not mean that everyone must give up their careers. But it does show the importance of knowing Jesus intimately so that we can follow him obediently. Also, in Luke 10, 25 through 37, Jesus makes it clear that we should love our neighbor. First, he says, we love God with all of our heart. And he follows that up with, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he goes on to explain that our neighbor is every other fellow human being. This does not mean that we only love them when it's easy. But sometimes we have to love them even when it's hard. Maybe we even have to give up something like a flourishing ministry in Samaria. It is true that we probably will not be visited by an angel to know what God wants us to do. But we can know what he wants us to do by spending time in his word and in prayer. Also, we may feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit to go out and share the gospel with someone. Obedience in action is to see others saved. And it can take many forms, but it will ultimately result in us serving others physically in love and sharing the gospel with them audibly. Therefore, to follow Jesus and love our neighbor well, we must understand that obedience in knowing God's word advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. In this section, we'll be looking at verses 30b through 35. And we read that Philip heard the Ethiopian reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep 
he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. I find it interesting that I have read this passage many times, and I've never thought about how vast Philip's knowledge of the scripture must have been. Imagine he's running beside a chariot and he hears this Ethiopian reading aloud and he recognizes it as the suffering servant section in Isaiah. But we have to remember, they didn't have chapters and verses. He basically had to know all of Isaiah and pick this section out as he's, mind you, running beside a chariot going down a road. That's pretty amazing. So he yells up to this Ethiopian, do you understand what you were reading? The the Ethiopian says, no, I need a guide. Then Philip joins him and guides him through this passage all the way to the good news about Jesus. Now this passage from Isaiah is found in Isaiah 53 verses 7 and 8 and describes the Messiah who will be rejected and silent before his accusers. He will be denied justice and killed. So Philip explains to the Ethiopian, that the one being talked about is Jesus and that this describes his trial and his death on the cross that paid for the sin of those that believe and trust in him. Also, Philip would have explained that Jesus was resurrected from the dead and that he ascended into heaven where he now sits at the right hand of the Father and that people from every culture and every ethnicity can be saved. So for the Christians today, knowing the Bible is essential for sharing the gospel. When we know our Bible, we can start where the person we're talking to is. Whether it be a believer or an unbeliever. If it's a believer and, you, and they are having trouble understanding Scripture, you can start with them where they're at and work their way through. Help them grow and understand in it. If it's an unbeliever, we must remember that oftentimes people who are not Christians do not understand the Bible. And, and they make wrong conclusions. But instead of us being upset at their wrong conclusions... I think this would be a good place for us to listen to them, take the passage that they're talking about, and lead them to Jesus from it. This reminds me of a monument in Langley, Virginia, that stands outside of the CIA's headquarters. You can see it behind me. It's called Kryptos. And it was created by Jim Sanborn. And it features a scroll of copper. It's it's got an encoded message on it. Uh, This message is made up of letters uh, from the regular Latin alphabet and question marks that have been cut into the metal. This monument has been there since 1990. And though a few of the panels have been solved, one still remains unsolved. And though we can read the letters, the only one who knows the code is the sculptor. This means that without him guiding us through the code, we cannot understand what 
we're reading. Similarly, Christians are the ones that have the Holy Spirit that guides us in the Scriptures, that we can guide others. This means that we should make reading and studying the Bible a priority. Also, Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Later in John's gospel, in chapter 15, verses 7 and 8, we read, If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. We must not overlook that Jesus ties His Word abiding in us with bearing fruit that brings glory to God. And therefore, we can see the importance of being obedient in knowing God's Word to advance the fulfillment of the gospel reaching the whole world. Knowing God's Word also equips Christians to disciple others that they may understand that obedience in discipleship advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. This will be verses... 36 and 38 we're looking at here. Luke continues that after explaining the good news about Jesus, and as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, there's an exclamation point behind this. I'm thinking this eunuch is pretty excited. He says, see, here's water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now because we only have this brief account of what took place, we don't know when the Ethiopian repented and believed. But we can be sure that it was before he requests to be baptized. I say this because it's, it's kind of the running theme throughout Acts. Uh, repent and believe, be baptized. So we see that. So I'm sure it is. This is just a very brief account of what happened. So also, we don't know how long Philip was riding with the Ethiopian in the chariot. But I believe because the Ethiopian's request to be baptized it was long enough for Philip to have started the disciple-making process with him. This is because part of the good news about Jesus is that when we trust him, we become disciples, following him and obeying him and his commands. Philip realized that time was short with this Ethiopian, So it appears that he told him the basics of discipleship, starting with baptism. And after their discussion about Christ being seen through the Scriptures, I'm sure there was a long conversation about how to see Christ in the Scriptures and how important it is to study the Scriptures and to learn about Christ and what He has commanded Also, I believe that he shares with him the importance of sharing the gospel with others. Because I'm sure he said, I'm here because Jesus commands us to go, to take the gospel to all the world. This makes me think back to when I was a child. And I could not swim very well. Yet, I wanted to jump off of a diving board. <clears throat> I had high aspirations as a kid. Um, <laughs> so I talked to my dad about it. And so my dad gave me some jumping off of the diving board advice. He said, 
when you jump, hold your breath. He said, when you jump, jump out as far as you can. And he said, when you hit the water, start swimming up as fast as you can. And he said, when you break through the water, swim to the ladder as fast as you can. And so this advice was good. I survived. I'm here today. <laughs> but how much better would it have been for him to get in the water or walk me to the end of the diving board, explain to me how it works. This is how you want to enter the water. And then he gets in the water to catch me the first couple of times. I'm telling you, it would have been much more comfortable on me and... And I'm pretty sure it would have been a more refined appearance uh, uh, hitting the water. So, but in, the same, in a similar way, in this section, we see the Ethiopian's desire to be obedient to the command of Christ by being baptized. He just yells out, there's water, let me be baptized, which is one of the first steps as a disciple. Now, we don't know all that Philip shared with this Ethiopian, but Irenaeus wrote in 180 AD that this Ethiopian became an evangelist himself to his own people. So it is possible that the basics of discipleship that he had been given and the fact that he was filled with the Holy Spirit helped him develop and be able to somewhat fulfill the Great Commission in his own area by going to others there. Also, we know that Jesus took discipleship very seriously, as in his last command before his ascension was to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And then in John 17, verses 18 through 20, we see how much Jesus looked forward to people in the future being saved and growing in truth when he prays to the Father, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake... I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask this for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Discipleship for us here at River Oaks is different from the encounter at Philip, with Philip and the Ethiopian in that we are together for a longer time. Therefore, discipleship often happens in growth groups where we study the Scriptures together and we talk about living out Christ's commands in our everyday life. If you're not in a growth group, let me encourage you to join one that you may be discipled and that you may become a disciple-maker a disciple maker that reaches the lost and makes disciples out of the lost who are converted to Christ. As we conclude, remember that obedience to God will advance the fulfillment of reaching the ends of the earth with the gospel. We must not forget that each of us that belongs to Christ, is a disciple. And as a disciple, we are to be obedient to God in all that He commands. Throughout this passage, we have seen Philip as he does not hesitate to do what he's commanded by God. Also, we see the Ethiopian being obedient in following the process of discipleship. Both of these examples show us how obedience to God advances the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. Further, we see that the passage we have looked at ends with Philip 
and the Ethiopian coming up out of the water. And the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. As I thought about this, I thought, he's going away rejoicing because now he knows his sins have been forgiven. He now belongs to Christ. This man, this eunuch, who could never become fully Jewish, who couldn't go in the temple, yet he wanted to be around, to be at least close to the worship of God. Now, now his sins have been forgiven. And he belongs to Jesus Christ. This is reason for rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Astos. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. I think in this we can see that for the disciple, the command of sharing the gospel is not burdensome. To obey the gospel, to obey the command to take the gospel to all the world should bring joy to us. This advances the gospel going to the whole world, that the whole world may hear, and I pray, turn to Jesus Christ. I would like to encourage each of you today to take action in being an obedient disciple that wants to see the fulfillment of the whole world hearing the gospel. This may mean that you join a growth group, or it may mean that you become more active in the growth group you're in. Also, it may mean that you take time to work through the New Testament to find out all of Jesus' commands to his disciples. Further, it may mean that you seek out how to serve your neighbor that you may love them and share the gospel with them. And finally, if you are here and you are not a Christian and you have questions about what we've talked about today or you have questions about Scripture that you've heard, please, please come down front. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you. Also, there will be elders in the back that will be happy to talk to you. Um, Also, if you would just like prayer, uh, please feel free to come up or go in back to one of the elders back there. As we close, let me encourage you to take your discipleship seriously, to seek out what it means to be a disciple, to grow in that, and then you can make disciples to reach the world with the gospel. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you this morning, we see how good you are, Lord, that you desire to use us to share your truths. And that, Lord, you have given us your word, you have given us your Holy Spirit, that we might be obedient to you and that we might advance the fulfillment of reaching the world with the gospel. I pray, Father, that we would leave today different, growing, loving you more. It's in your name, Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen.